Hey everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a modded Minecraft server in 1.16.5. I know it says 4 here, but I can't put the 5 video here until I've created it and I'm creating it right now, so that's why it says 4. But nevertheless, we are teaching you how to make a modded server in Minecraft 1.16.5 so you can play mods with your friends. But I do want to mention some stuff up front. This is going to take a decent computer to run it. Something with a CPU from the last 2 years and at least 16, but honestly more like 32 gigabytes of RAM if you plan on playing Minecraft and running your server at the same time modded servers eat RAM for breakfast, lunch, dinner, all at the same time. Three meals in one setting for these modded servers. So, truthfully, you gotta have a decent computer for it. On top of that, it's only meant for your friends, your family, people you can trust because it's hosted on your own IP address. What does that mean? Well, when someone gets the IP to your server, they can figure out where you lived under your latitude and longitude coordinates, and they could also DDoS you if they wanted to. That's what's only meant for people you can trust with basically coming over to your house that you should give this IP address out to. And on top of all that, it is a little bit more of a complicated problem. You can see it's 20 minutes long. So if you want the simplest process possible for setting up a server, or if you don't have a good enough computer to set up a modded server, or last but not least, if you just want a public modded server or a server that you don't have to worry about network security at all with, check out Apex Minecraft Hosting. You can go to Apex at the first link in the description down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to get your server up and running quickly and easily in under five minutes. Not only can you start a Forge server like we're doing here and add your own mods to it and add any mods you want to play with your friends onto that server and easily play those mods with your friends, you can also do one-click setup of over 130 mod packs. So tons of different mod packs at Apex Minecraft Hosting can be used and set up in just one click without you having to do anything, again, other than clicking a few times to set that mod pack up. On top of all of that, Apex has 24 hours, 7-day support, so should you have any issues running your server, Apex is there to help you. We love and trust Apex so much that we have our own server, play.breakdowncraft.com on them. You can check out Apex at the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to get your server set up in the easiest way possible. Again, if you want the simplest way, the easiest way, Apex is the way to go. But if you don't, if you still want to start it on your own computer and you've got the hardware for it and you're okay, which is just being for your friends and family, let's get rocking and rolling. The first thing we want to do is go to the second link down below and that's going to take you here. Now this is our Forge tutorial for basically installing Forge for single player, but your friends are going to need to do that. And it's how you're going to be able to download the Forge server files as well. So your friends will need Forge installed locally, as well as any other mods you want to have installed on your server. They'll need those installed locally as well to play on your server. However, we'll explain that more in our mod video. Nevertheless, once we're here, we want to go ahead and click on this green Download Forge button. That will take us off to Forge's website, where we can see it's MC 1.16.4 here. We want 1.16.5, so we want to come over here to the left-hand side, click on plus 1.16, and then click on 1.16.5. Once we have MC 1.16.5 here, we can come under Download Latest and click Installer. Now when you click on that, stop. Don't click on anything whatsoever on this page. Like, at all. The only thing you want to do on this page is wait. Just sit and wait and wait and wait. And eventually in the top right, a red skip button will appear. It takes less than 10 seconds and this red skip button will appear. You then want to go ahead and click on that red skip button and in the bottom left, Forge 1.16.5 will begin downloading. As long as it has Forge in the title, you can go ahead and keep it. Now that's on Google Chrome, on Mozilla Firefox, it may pop up in the center of your screen. And if it does, go ahead and save it there in the center of your screen. Now we can go ahead and minimize our browser, and on my desktop I have Forge 1.16.5. If this isn't on your desktop, no worries, it's in your downloads folder. To find that, click the little Windows icons in the top left of my screen, probably in the bottom left of your screen. Click on that little Windows icon in the top or bottom left though, and then go ahead and type in Downloads. Now this Downloads file folder in Windows, click on that and drag and drop Forge from here to your desktop. Nevertheless, once a Forge is on your desktop, we can go ahead and start installing it. The first thing we actually need to do is install it locally. To do that, go ahead and right click on Forge, click on Open With, click on Java and click OK. But Nick, I don't have Java or I do have Java and this photo or like this logo looks a little weird and it doesn't look like your Java logo. Well, in that case, here's what you need to do. You need to go to the description down below and go through this tutorial, which is how to download and install Java for Minecraft servers and Minecraft mods. Uh, this is a modded server. You're definitely going to need this version of Java if you don't have it already. A lot of people do. So nevertheless, go through this simple three-step tutorial. Then you should be able to open up Forge. But if you're still having issues or if your jar files look a bit weird, you need to come here and run the jar fix as well. Another quick and easy three-step tutorial that's going to take all the jar files on your computer and link them back to Java, making them look like Java files again, basically. 
Now we can go ahead and minimize our browser and again right click on Forge, click on Open With, click on Java and click OK. That's going to then open up the Forge installer like, like right like so where we just want to click on Install Client and click OK. Now what this is actually doing is installing Forge locally. If it doesn't go play Minecraft 1.16.5 with no mods, come back and then you'll be able to install this without any issues. We have to do this because you have to run Forge locally like through single player as well as running it on your server so let's go ahead and click ok to close out of that now we want to go ahead and right click on our desktop create a new folder you can name this whatever you want but i'm going to name it play.breakdowncraft.com why am i naming it that because that is our own minecraft server where we have custom skyblock green protected survival it's truly amazing let's go ahead and now once we've got that folder created right click on forge again so after we've created this folder on our desktop we're going to right click on forge again click on open with click on Java and click OK. So we've went through this process already, but here's where things change. Now we want to click on Install Server. Then this big red box is going to appear. We're going to click on these three dots over here on the right, and then we want to click on Desktop on the left-hand side. Then we want to select the folder we created, in our case, play.breakdowncraft.com, and then click Open. Then that red box is going to disappear, and we can click OK. Now you'll see this, yep, yeah, boom, there you go. Some files appear back there in that folder. How or why does that happen? Well, that's because the Forge server files are installing. So let's just go ahead, basically sit back and relax while that happens. I'll see you once it's finished. There we go, successfully downloaded Minecraft server and installed 1.16.5. That's what we want to see. So if we go ahead and click OK, we are done. You can actually delete the Forge pro folder, like, you know, file you downloaded from your desktop. So we just have this play.breakdowncraft.com. So let's go ahead and open that up. And once we have this open, we're going to see some folders in here. We're going to have Forge and we're going to have Minecraft server. What we want to do first is actually go ahead and rename Forge from Forge to actually Forge Server. Now mine is ForgeServer.jar. Yours may just be Forge Server. If you want yours to say ForgeServer.jar, come up here to the top and click on View, and then make sure File Name Extensions is clicked. For example, if I unclick that, as you can see, mine's just now called Forge Server. If I go ahead and click it, mine's now ForgeServer.jar. I have to click it twice. There we go, ForgeServer.jar. Once we've done that, we want to go to the description and find this. These are the different amounts of RAM you want your server to have. 2 gigabytes, 3 gigabytes, 4 gigabytes. 4 gigabytes is usually good for 4 or 5 mods. Once you get over that, you might even need 6 gigabytes to run a modded server. I'm going to go ahead, though, and start with 2 gigabytes because I don't have a lot of RAM left. We will see lag on my server, though, with just 2 gigabytes. Now let's go ahead and right-click in here, and we want to right-click and create a new text document. So we've got this new text document. Open that up, and then go ahead and paste in this new text document, that file that we you know copied from the description, from where it says Java to where it says pause in the description, copy that and paste it in here. Then you wanna go ahead and do file, save as, and then you wanna title this run.bat. Then you wanna save type as all files. So name is run.bat, that's very important, and then save type as is all files. Then go ahead and click save. We can now close out of this text document. You can delete the new text document.txt from your server folder if you want to. You don't have to do that. I just like to keep things clean. And now if we go ahead and double click on run.bat, it's going to open this up and our server is going to start. It's going to fail though, so don't freak out about that. It's eventually going to say, press any key to continue. It's failed. Why is it failed? Because we need to agree to the Minecraft EULA. So let's go ahead and double click on the EULA.txt here. And then we have EULA equals false. And as long as you agree to the EULA listed right here, go to that link and if you agree to it, change EULA equals false to EULA equals true, T-R-U-E, exactly like that. Then you want to go ahead and do file save and boom we are good we can double click on run.bat and at this point your forge server is going to start up right you can join your forge server i'm actually going to go ahead and show you how to do that because it's a good way to test if you can join now you may not be able to join via your public ip that's how your friends are going to join but i would always recommend you joining with your local ip address which is what we're about to do, get and do and all that stuff your friends will join off of your public ip you'll join off of your local ip Nevertheless, let's go ahead and let the server start up. I will show you what it looks like when it is, and I'll see you after a quick jump cut. Once your server is set up, you will see this. It'll say done. That means it's done. Your server is set up. Now, I'm going to show you how to join it. First and foremost, though, we need to get the IP. To do that, we're going to click that little Windows icon again. It's in the top left of my screen. It's probably in the bottom left of your screen. Go ahead and click on that. This time, though, we want to type in CMD. That'll have Command Prompt right here. Click on that. And then in Command Prompt, what you want to do is type IP, C-O-N, F-I-G. IP config, exactly like that, and hit Enter. Then we want to go ahead and open up a notepad document, just a new little notepad document here. 
And in this notepad document, what we want to do is copy down two numbers. The first one is our IPv4 address. This is the local IP address I said you would be using to join your server. It can be found over here on the left. As you can see, IPv4. Mine is 192.168.1.123. Yours will most likely be completely different. Then we want to go ahead and get our default gateway. So we can find that also over here. Now, if you have two default gateways, basically two lines next to default gateway, you want the one that's just numbers, not the one that's numbers and letters. For example, if you have one that's like FE, this big long string up here, don't get that one. Get the smaller one that's just numbers. In our case, that's 192.168.1.1. Yours will probably be different, but it could be the same. Now let's go ahead and close out a command prompt. At this point, let's join your Forge server. To do that, we want to open up the Minecraft launcher here. We want to select our Forge profile. So as you can see, we click this drop down box. We've got the Forge profile. Click on that and click play. Now you may be prompted that you're about to play modern Minecraft. You know that. Go ahead and click through it. Click play anyway, and you'll be good to go. Nevertheless, I'm going to go ahead, do a quick jump cut, and I will see you once we are in game. If I do notice I have World Edit installed, that's not going to work. You have to have the exact same mods of your server as you do locally. So let me go ahead and uninstall World Edit really fast, and then I will meet you on the Minecraft main menu with Forge launched. So here we are on the Minecraft main menu. If we go ahead and click on multiplayer, we can direct connect, and we're going to use that IPv4 address we grabbed earlier. So in our case, 192.168.1.123. We click on join server. It's going to put us right on into the server. If yours doesn't, it would very much so surprise me, but it most likely is because you got the wrong IPv4 address. Go look at that. You can also try to join via your default gateway. Sometimes for some reason, that will work as the IP. But here we are. We are in our server. Let's go ahead and just destroy the top of this tree so we know later on that it is, in fact, still the same server. That, that's how we're going to do that. Oh, and we can grab this. Cool. So there you have it. We are now in the server. We are good to go. I just wanted to prove that's how you're going to join your server. At this point, though, your friends cannot join your server. In order to do that, we're going to need to port forward, so let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect here, cancel, quit the game, and we're going to stop over here the server by typing SDOP, exactly like this right here in the chat. That's the only way you want to stop your server. Don't stop it any other way, or you could have some issues. So as you can see, the server is now stopped. We can press any key to continue. All right, so to port forward, the first thing we want to do is actually come into our server folder here, scroll down, and click on server.properties. Now, if this doesn't open in Notepad, go ahead and select Notepad to open it. Then slow down, or sorry, so slow down, scroll down to server dash IP equals, and then paste your IPv4 address directly next to it, right? Like so, 192.168.1.3 in my case, or 123 in my case, yours can be completely different. That's fine. Now let's go ahead and click File, Save, right like so, and that's going to save the server.properties. Now, to port forward, we want to go ahead and open our browser, open up a brand new tab in our browser, right like so, and then we want to go ahead and take our default gateway and paste that in right up here at the top. So our default gateway, paste it up here where you normally type in a website. Hit enter, and that's going to take us off to our router. Now, your router is most likely going to look completely different, but the one thing that's going to look the same is the login box. You will have some sort of login box like this right here. Yours may pop in from the top, maybe in the center, but you'll have some sort of a login box. What do you enter in here? Where your router's username and password. This is different from your Wi-Fi password, so we want to make sure we get the correct one from here. This is a simple method to find your router's username and password and login info. As you can see, most people find it by method four here, and you are good to go. You've got your, sorry, method three is where most people find it, and then you'll be able to come back over here and log into your router, right like so. Once you've logged into your router, again, it'll take you to something that most likely looks completely different from what you see here. But that's okay, because we again have another tutorial. I just forgot to open it up before this. Let me do that real fast. So now we have our tutorial open over here, and this tutorial will show you how to port forward on all the top routers today. And even if your router isn't mentioned, Guess what? You still need to go in there and you need to watch this video because even if your router isn't mentioned, it's going to show you all the different terms, all the different lingo, if you will, that you can have on your router. So go through this tutorial, go through that, and then come back to your router and you'll most likely be able to get in the right direction. For me, it is in security. For you, it could be in security. It could be in advanced. It could be an admin. It could be in advanced and then advanced again or admin and then advanced again. But for me, it is in security. Then it's in apps and gaming. For you, it may be in apps and gaming or it could be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It could be in port forwarding slash port triggering. It could be in NAT gaming, NAT gaming. It could be in port forwarding. It could be in port setup port area. It could be in so many different things, but for me, it is in security, then it's in apps and gaming, then finally it's in single port forwarding. Now for me, I have to click add a new single port forward. You may have a big list, right, like so, and if that's the case, just use the one at the top. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and for our application name or ID, enter in Minecraft, right, like so. For our external port and actually anything that has the word port in it at all, if it says the word port at all, you want to enter in 25565, right? Like so. Sorry, 25565. 
255. I mean, there we go. 25565 is what you want to enter in for internal port, external port, port one, port two, anything that says the word port. So external port, hey, there's that word port, 25565. Internal port, hey, there's that word port, 25565, right like so. For protocol, we want to select TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both. Either way, you want to make sure both protocols are selected. For device IP, we want to go ahead and change that to what our IPv4 address is, which in our case is 192.168.1.123. Now, you may not have a device IP. Instead, you may have a drop-down box of all the devices connected to your internet. If that's the case, go ahead and select your device that you're starting your server on, and then you'll be good to go. Now, for most people, you're done at this point. You can click Save, Apply, whatever. Now, for some of you, you may have had an internal IP. That's going to be your IPv4 address and had an external IP. That's going to be your public public IP address, but guess what? Everyone needs their public IP address because that's how their friends are going to join their server. To find that, go to the description down below where you can go to what's my IP address. This is our website that shows you your IP address here. Now, as you can see, for you, all you can see is the 100 at the end, right? All you can see is that little 100 at the end. The rest of it is blacked out, but you can also see all the other information someone can get from your IP address. Again, blacked out for you, but it just shows you this is only for people that you can trust. So nevertheless, we're going to go ahead and copy this, and if you need it back on your port forward, paste it in here. Otherwise, apply, okay, save your port forward, and then now we can go ahead and start our server again. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go in here, and we're going to click on the run.bat file to start our server again. Again. And now I'm going to go ahead and open up Minecraft, right like so. So let's go ahead and open up Minecraft, but we want to make sure that we're playing Forge for Minecraft, right? As you can see, Forge 1.16.5. I'm going to actually switch to this custom profile I made because the resolution is better. Let's go ahead and open up Minecraft now. I will again do a quick jump cut, and I will see you on the Minecraft main menu to show you you can join your server. All right, so here we are in game. We've got Minecraft open, and our server is running. As you can see, it says done there. I'm going to go ahead and click on multiplayer, direct connect, but this time, instead of our IPv4 address, we're going to paste in that public IP address. Now, as you can see, you can still see 100 at the end. The rest of it is blacked out again. You don't to give that to anybody and everybody but that 100 does stay and now when we click join server it's going to join us on in now for me i can do that my isp allows that some internet service providers don't allow you to connect via your public ip address that's why you need to connect via that local ipv4 address we found earlier however your friends will have to join via that public ip so send that to them and then if they can't join here's what it could be it could be a windows defender right which we have an in-depth guide in the description down below on how to allow java through windows defender what this is going to do is allow, oh, sorry, everybody. Sorry. Whoa. Sorry. Okay. I desktop audio muted. That was very loud. But nevertheless, we have an in-depth guide here on how to allow Java through your firewall for your Minecraft servers. That's up to over 31,000 people at this point, And that can actually allow you to go ahead and let people through that. But it can also be an antivirus on your computer. So be sure to check that as well. Or a firewall on your router blocking them for connecting. Last but not least, make sure that not only do they have the exact same mods that your server is installed on, but Forge installed locally as well because they need both of those in order to play. Speaking of mods on your server though, you probably want to know how to add those. So check out the video on your screen right now, as well as the video in the description down below. And I think it's also at the eye at the top of your screen, all that stuff to get mods added to your server. But nevertheless, you now know how to get a modded server set up. My name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown. Thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you in the mod add mods to your server video and I am out. Peace.